Hey, what's up guys? So the uh, the exposure unit, um, I did a previous video on, build your own LED vacuum exposure unit. Um, I'll post a link to that video, you know, at the end of this video. Uh, basically, I wanted to show you guys the wiring diagram. Um, I took the time to do a uh, schematic, you know, some easy to understand uh, wiring diagram. So I'm gonna kind of go over all that with you real quick. If you have any questions, you know, write them below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Um, I'm actually, certified electrician before I jumped into the screen for anything so you know hopefully I can walk you through your build things might be a little different on your wire depending on your timer how many drivers you get but um, it's all pretty basic um, this will give you a good fundamental understanding of you know what you're doing when you're doing the wiring at least what I did with mine so um, so yeah I'll try to you know give a real comprehensive uh, explanation best of my ability and uh, if you have any questions comment below all right welcome to the pdf the wiring diagram for my vacuum assisted vacuum blanket led exposure unit um, this is really a basic wiring diagram i think it's pretty easy for anybody to understand um, i'll try to walk you through it obviously you don't do anything with the power on so when you're wiring this don't have that plug in the wall use some common sense um, and if you follow this um, you should be able to get yourself a, a vacuum exposure unit LED build all on your own and uh, you can say hey I did this so let's take a quick moment I'm just gonna go over a couple little details I didn't include the ground wire on this build um, the less wires I thought it'd be easier for you guys to, to really see and understand if, if especially if you're new to electrical so I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible so I didn't include the green wire your ground wire is gonna be green you're gonna have one on your pigtail you're gonna have one on your vacuum pump as long as those two wires are connected together with a wire nut somewhere in your build, you're good because really you want that vacuum pump grounded. I would even go a step further and out of the wire nut where you have these two connected, take another green wire, connect it to the other two that you have, and then run it to your equipment somewhere where there's metal. If it's painted, sand it. And what I want you to do is take that extra green pigtail and screw it with a self tapper or somehow mount it to your metal with a screw. What that's gonna do is give your equipment something to ground to. Um, just in case you have a short anywhere in your equipment on the vacuum pump and your wiring and it's touching metal, that could potentially live up your box. You go by and you touch your box and if it's electrified, you can get shocked. So it's just, a, it's what they call an equipment ground. It's an extra step I would do. Um, so, you know, tie these two greens together from your vacuum pump and your pigtail, and then take the time to take, uh, take another little wire, you know, another little green wire, and screw it to the metal, exposed metal, not painted metal. Screw it somewhere to your box. That's going to give you a little extra protection. Um, then your equipment would be grounded, and uh, it's going to be a lot safer that way. So I didn't include the ground, but... Uh, that's that's the explanation of that um, what I used was a terminal block you can get these from Home Depot you can get these just about any hardware store they come in various sizes you can get a two post a four post a six eight ten forty whatever you need um, I got a six way terminal block you don't necessarily need these um, you could do all this with the wire nut so if I had all this wiring together inside a wire nut which would essentially be the pigtail and these switches so these four wires i could bundle that all up in a in a um in a wire nut no problem um you'd want to use a larger wire nut that suits 12 gauge and can fit four wires um, probably a red wire nut but uh i just like the look and it's really clean with the block it's easy to if you have to service anything to disconnect um, the connections probably a little better than wires touched together inside of a wire nut so it's just a little more secure it looks cleaner I chose to use the terminal block if you don't want to spend the extra five bucks or whatever it is for the terminal block don't use it you could definitely wire all these blacks together you can wire all the whites together just in within a, a wire nut so I chose the terminal block um, if you're new to electrical let me just take a few moments to explain this um, when your hot comes in your hot's going to be your black what it's doing when it touches this first terminal block 
is it's hotting that up. That's live. That's 120 volts. As soon as you plug that into the wall, that's 120 volts. Um, that's only going to live the top terminal block up. So what I did is I took another little piece of wire. It's obviously exposed on the end where you see the copper. I do a little loop and I hot up the second terminal block. Then I do another loop and I hot up the third terminal block. So the top three end up becoming the hot terminal box. That's why I kind of indicated them with the little lines going through it to distinguish them from these ones. So the bottom three, same thing. I've got my white, my neutral coming in, looping to the next one, looping to the next one. Now this becomes my, these bottom three become my neutral blocks. As long as these two aren't touching each other, you're all good. Um, or, you know, you don't want your neutral and your hot touching each other anywhere along this build. So if you have, you know, if you're using stranded wire, sometimes you get little stragglers that stick out and it might be touching the, you know, the screw top on this and then you get a little short, you know, it might trip the breaker. So just make sure your, your connections are real clean. Um, nowhere should your black touch your white along this build. Um, so yeah, so I've got my, my terminal block, you know, hotted up. I got my neutral side and basically coming out of each terminal block I've got one going to each switch just to make it really easy for you to understand and comprehensive um, once your hot comes in to the switch if the switch is off that means the circuit is open as soon as you turn the switch on it closes you don't see all the mechanics on the inside but it closes and then your electricity has a path to run through in this case if I close or turn this switch to on, then my electricity is able to run through and go to my light. Then it returns and goes back to neutral, goes back to the utility. So that's how you light up, you know, these particular circuits. So um, this particular toggle switch is really basic. It's going to have two posts. Um, you're going to have a hot coming in and you're gonna have a hot coming out. There's different ways to wire this, but if you wanna uh, just you know do it, which I believe is probably the easiest and most comprehensive, just have your hot coming in, going through the switch, and then going out to your light. Now I'm gonna take a moment to explain. On the light, you're gonna have two terminal blocks. One's gonna be a brass color, and the other's gonna be a silver color. When you're doing electrical, it's the same with like, you know, receptacles, plugs, and those sort of things. Your brass is always going to be the hot side. The silver is going to be your neutral side. So when anytime you see a brass, kind of an easy way, like I've always, you know, I just know it, but um, at this point, but one of the ways I first learned is brass is starts with the letter B, so does black. Black indicates hot, so does your brass. Brass is going to be your hot side. So after you come out of your first switch, hook it to the brass. Um, I didn't put a little dot here, but you're basically going to have a wire nut and another short piece of black go into your other safety light. That's if you choose to use two lights. I, I use one on each side of my build. Um, you can choose to use one light if you want, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, you can use four lights, but I just kind of found that a light on each side of mine worked really well. So, you know, I have my hot going to my first light. Um, somewhere along the way, put a little wire nut if you got a second light. And just run it run that hot to the brass side on that second light um neutrals like i said the white wire is going to hook to the silver on your light and those are going to be tied together somewhere right here with a wire nut or wherever you want along your build as long as you got a neutral going to each one of these lights and back to the block or really anywhere along the neutral line all the all the neutrals are going to be tied together at some point you right here i chose this point for all my neutrals to come together and go out so as long as those lights are tied together, you're good to go. Your hots are not tied together. They're going to each individual piece of equipment. This first hot is going to the lights. The second hot is going to the vacuum pump. The third hot is going to the timer. So it doesn't really matter if, as long as all your neutrals are tied together going out, you're good. Your, your hots are gonna be separated going to each piece of equipment. So uh, we've got the lights. Now let's go to the next terminal block, which in my case, I like my safe light in the first position because that's usually what you're doing first. Then as soon as you close your, get everything lined up, then you close your lid, then you turn your vacuum pump on. So that's in my second terminal block. So 
same thing you're coming out of this hot this is constantly hot once you have this plugged in hot's coming through the switch then it's going to my vacuum pump um with the vacuum pump um i you know you when you get your vacuum pump it's probably going to have a pigtail similar to that on the end of it i just cut it off and stripped it and you know ran it inside my box and then you know tied them together so had the vacuum pump there somewhere along the way you're gonna have a wire nut you know tying these together and then of course i have my neutral going back to the second terminal there um third switch um you know you get your vacuum pump it does its thing you're ready to light it up then you have the third switch so as soon as your vacuum pumps where it needs to be and you've got uh your screen all settled in and sucked down to the to the glass go ahead and hit, hit your third switch that's going to kick on your timer um, all timers are going to be a little different depending on what you got um, i ended up getting like an omron i believe i'll put a link below i got that this is off the top of my head so h cx5 i believe um, that could be wrong look at the link below but uh i got a you know one of the more expensive timers brand new they're over a hundred dollars i got mine from ebay for about 50 um they're even hard to find now on ebay for 50 they might be 60 70 dollars i went a little overkill um i i, I just kind of saw them on some other units you, as long as your timer counts down in seconds and um and minutes probably um you're good you know my burn time is 16 seconds that's all i need if you end up using fluorescent lights yours is going to be maybe two three minutes so as long as your timer goes up to what you think it's going to need to do then uh get that timer but the the main thing is that it counts down in seconds i don't believe you need the tenth of a second um, as long as you can count in seconds or your timer can count in seconds that's all you need um, so every timer is going to be a little different if you're stumped by the timer you got you know maybe take the time send me a picture i'll do my best to explain it to you um, to answer those type of emails you know i'll do my best you know uh, but all timers are going to have an input and they're going to have an output so you basically just got to take the time to look at the look at the back of it um, you know ask somebody if you're not too versed with some of the lingo that's on the back of your timer um, or like i said email me i'll do my best to answer your questions um, so yeah i kind of went overkill with my timer um, you don't necessarily need it as long as it counts seconds i think you're good um, so so yeah you hit that third switch what happens the timer kicks on my output hots up right away and then what that does is sends voltage to my drivers um, my particular setup I needed two drivers I'll explain that in a minute um, so the driver is used for LED what it does is it converts AC power into 12 volts DC LED lights are all DC so you definitely need a driver not a ballast if you're using fluorescent lights that's gonna be a ballast um, they kind of look the same they're both blocks they're both uh, they both convert energy but with the LED uh, driver what it's doing is converting AC to DC with a ballast you're converting AC to the proper um, AC power for your fluorescence but hopefully you're doing an LED build. Um, you could use this same concept here for for a, a fluorescent. Just you know, switch out your switch out uh, this from driver to ballast. So hopefully that didn't confuse anybody. So here we got a, a driver. We're doing LED lights. Um, so most of your drivers um, for the for your LED lights, I'm assuming ninety percent of the what you're going to run into is going to be a twelve volt DC output. Um, I'm going to provide a link below where you can see the exact drivers I got for the amount of footage I got. The The LED lights I got are considered high output, and I think it also had twice the amount of diodes, which the diode is these little lights. That's that's what a LED, that's what lights up in your, your LED strips. They're called diodes. So I've got the high output. That's why I'm able to do the 16 second burn time um it's maybe a little overkill you don't need to i, I might have been able to get away with one driver if i just did the standard output and i probably would have been fine maybe my my exposure would have been you know more closer to 30 to 40 seconds um i don't you know it probably yeah it probably would have been about that about 30 seconds 
30 to 40 seconds. Um, so I'm doing 16 seconds. I got two drivers. If you want to save a little money, maybe don't get the high output, maybe get one driver. But the main thing is that you do the math because the driver, each driver you get on the website is going to be, have a specific wattage output. That's the main thing you don't want. It, it all depends on how long you end up going with your strips. Um, but the, the link I provide below, they've got a great um, page that kind of breaks down, you know, how many, how much wattage per foot or per strip that you get. Um, and, you know, depending on what lengths you get, they, they do a really comprehensive breakdown of how much wattage you, you're going to use depending on the footage. And that'll tell you what driver you need. If you follow, um, if you follow, you know, the description I have below, you know, um, if you get the same drivers I got and the same strips, you'll be fine. Um, so yeah, take the time, do the math. Um, the main thing is your wattage output and it's most likely going to be a 12 volt, uh, DC. I'm, uh, I'm sure 95% of these lights are, are that maybe a hundred percent. Um, so the other thing, I think it's the last thing I'm going to note here. Um, the way I wired it, this is considered parallel and what that means is each one of these lights is coming off of the same point so i've got my voltage coming in and it's running down the strip then i've got my voltage coming in the next one and it's all coming straight in from the driver so all four of these are coming straight in and running through each light the the other way you could wire this, and I'm not going to recommend doing this, is what they call series. Um, series is if you had the voltage coming in this first light, and it runs through the lights, and then you run out of this light, and you do a loop to the second light. Then you run through that light, and then you do another loop. Bam. And then you run through that light, and then you do the fourth and final loop, and then you run through that light. Um that's that's considered series um the issue with that is you have voltage loss when you loop through these lights you're going to have a much greater voltage loss um for example you, the light's going to be brighter on this diode where the power initially comes in and as it goes through each light it's going to start to lose a little bit of power so by the time you get to your fourth and final strip here you've lost some voltage so this light isn't the same brightness as that light. It's going to be inconsistent. And so what we really want when we're doing exposure is, you know, consistent lighting. Um, you want all these lights to be, you know, the same brightness. And so I highly suggest wiring this the same way I did here. This is considered parallel and, um, that's how you want to want to wire this up. So, um, let's see, what else do I got? You know, I put a little note here about, you know, it's kind of touching on the watt wattage thing. Um, I touch on the parallel thing, so I think that's it. All right, cool. So we just walked through the wiring diagram, and if you have any questions, like I said, just comment below. I'm gonna, if you haven't seen the video of my build, um, it's gonna be in one of these corners. So just click on that and uh, see the build, and hit me up if you want that PDF for the wiring schematic.